It's Thursday night. Of course, that means it's time for Jungle Drums. I'm joined this evening by my good friend, Sergeant J. Maybe? You there? <laughs> A wild Scotsman appears indeed. J, did, uh, are you still there, sir? Have you uh, lost the ability to speak? Headset issues, by chance? Yes, no, maybe? Hello, hello. Yes, now I can hear you. So I literally turn around to turn the fan away from the mic, and then my mic decides to go over. <laughs> well, I'm not having it now. <laughs> well done, well done. Oh, gee, dear gee. Um, right, so, obviously I haven't streamed in uh, quite a little while. Last time I streamed was live from Insomnia X Resonate. You too, Atrocity, it was nice to see. I didn't have a chance really to get a well, good ch opportunity to talk to you. I was just running around trying to uh, meet folk and do things and capture footage and um, just a bit too busy for my own good. It was just one of those weekends that... Um, it was quite it was quite a different experience instead of just going to enjoy the show um you know was actually uh ex you know the uh the work that was involved yeah no i hear you i hear you um but no it was good it was good good to run into you sir um right so it's just me and jj i, I you know i tried to introduce you for you to say holler like you usually do but you know what the offer it's just been it's I gone went, I went no to it's holler, no it's and the mic's it's, just went nah the nah. moment has passed right i mean it's just it's gone just we'll, we'll forget about it's it it's, it's never to come back didn't happen didn't happen um right so first item of news for this week is uh it's actually i think th i'm sure the story had popped um, either over the, over the weekend or right at the beginning of the week, and that was, of course, the announcement that Microsoft Paint is going to be killed off after 32 years. Uh, this article is actually from the Guardian, but you know, the new it's all over the internet. You know, basically, Microsoft Paint's been around since 1985. Yes, it's a very simple program, a very simple application. You know, most folk that do art stuff let's be honest you're going to use if, if you don't want to pay for it you're going to use gimp um but if you've got a bit of money you're going to be using adobe products and whatnot um but ms paint has always been just a handy little application if you need to you know if you're if you have a meme emergency and you have to very quickly craft something together paint has been great for that you know same just add it adding text in very quickly or manipulating um manipulating photos um, but the next Windows 10 update, which is nicknamed the Autumn Update, um, or Fall, as our cousins on the other side of the pond call it, um, is going to take that away from us. All we're going to be left with is the um, Paint 3D, which, Jay, have you had an opportunity to actually attempt to use that that program? Um, no, no. Oh. Apparently, mm -hmm. apparently they're putting Paint onto the uh, Microsoft Store. Yes, okay, yes. It's a Windows Store. Well, that's the thing that um, I think initially they were just saying that that's it, it's it's going away, yeah. and then I, I believe it was a day or two later they've kind of well not reversed the decision, but you know said oh no no it's just that we're we're taking it out of um, Windows you know as standard it's still going to be there though, um, but I mean you can imagine the reaction of the internet immediately when this was announced, um, I mean, you know Microsoft Paint was one of the last few. Um, applications that was uh, still around because I mean they, they yeah. killed off Outlook Express you know the reader app and the reading list you know they were all all been killed off um, and you know when it comes to paint 3d now I've heard from quite a few content creators like actual you know decent artists you know not like some scrub like myself <laughs> scarlet gamers you can, draw, you can draw a good stick man yeah you know people that can actually do art <laughs> right for um, Allegedly, Paint 3D is quite good, whereas for a complete noob like me, I just I had difficulty trying to do anything in it. Uh, just it didn't seem very intuitive, if you know what I mean, compared to programs like GIMP, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, GIMP has a, a shit ton of features that can be quite advanced, but at the same time, you know, I found you get the hang of it fairly quickly. Paint 3D, I just, I couldn't get to grips with, to be honest. I mean, it does look cool, the fact that you can make proper 3D images, you know, without having to have any kind of um, coding knowledge and whatnot. It's very much a what-you-see-is-what-you-get type of application. 
Yeah, um, you have the skill for it. Yeah, true. You know, and it is. It's. I mean, it's one of these things. Like, I mean, with my stepdaughter, she is a very talented artist. As in, with pencils, with paint. Um, funnily enough, just tonight she was at her art. Uh, she does like a little art class. You know, just for shits and giggles. And uh, one of the paintings that she did last week was actually sold. <laughs> so that was quite, quite cool. Um, but someone like her. For example, when it comes to digital art, she just can't quite get the hang of it. It doesn't, um, her natural talent doesn't seem to translate into uh, the digital world yet. You know, maybe over time it'll... It becomes a, uh, a lot easier if you've got like a tablet, uh, one of those art tablets. Yeah, when you can if just kind of... Uh, yeah, I had one of those back when I did graphics in um, A-levels, which was quite nice to be fair. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it is a different ball game, really. Hmm... But no, it was, um, I just found, you know, it's not that it's like terribly, Mr. Creature, thanks for the tweet there, buddy. Um, you know, it's not that it's, oh my God, groundbreaking, this changes everything. It just, it just, for me, it's kind of like the end of an era because it is one of these programs that has been around for so long. And let's be honest, it really hasn't changed much, you know, since the yeah. 80s. It's the, the bitch basic paint, well, art manipulation whatever you want to call it graphic program and it's just but it's always been quite good you know it's just been the handy it's been you know it was never one of the most capable apps by any means um if anything oh god remember way back when i think it could only deal with um bit maps hey mr creature how you doing bud how you doing um but you know now you can actually save as pings and save as jpegs and whatnot um but well, no, I, I remember, I remember uh, using paint back in school just to not uh, not to do it whilst I was uh, supposed to be doing work or anything, you know. Things like the same with uh, probably office workers probably used it quite a bit. <laughs> oh, to, God, uh, yes. This means, being, again, having that put in the window still almost takes it away from uh, companies being able to use it unless they... It's funny you say the that. Because right. I was the same at work where... You know, we had to... Obviously, it was all government systems, so you couldn't yeah. just install third-party apps. And so you were limited to any kind of art you were going to create was via paint or PowerPoint. <laughs> that, oh, good old, good old PowerPoint art. Good old art. PowerPoint <laughs> art. <laughs> I, had a, uh, I had a mate at uni who used to swear by that. He used to use it all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. But no, it's just, it's a shame. It's a shame. It is, it's basically one of Windows, you know, longest standing apps. And finally, it's been put out to pasture. Um, Where's the money, and that's, Lebowski? And that's... <laughs> Where's the money, Lebowski? Where's the fucking money, shithead? Mr. Creature, thank you so much. This is towards your convention recovery fund. Yes, you were not lying, my friend. Um, you know, I didn't... Um, I didn't go out looking for freebies at all. You know, I wanted to... To give them um, the different businesses there, you know, a little bit of actual actual business. But the things that I did buy were great, um, and of course, you know, the thing that one of the most expensive things whilst I was there was the damn lunch. We actually left the the, the festival itself and went down, and I got like you know a beer because it was we passed beer thirty. I, I just needed to quench my thirst and got like a deviled chicken burger that was like you know probably one of the most expensive burgers in Scotland. And it was probably one of the shittiest burgers I ever had, but oh well. Um, and I love you too, Mr. Creature. I love you too. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, that's why I wanted to include it. I just thought, you know, whether you love or hate Microsoft, love or hate Windows, you know, so many people over the years have used Paint at some point. And so I think, you know, to say, to give it a salute and say goodbye to it, um, I just thought it was proper to include it in this week's show. R.I.P. M.S. Paint. We loved you. Well, sad times. it is sad. It is sad. So I think we need something to kind of perk us up a little bit. Now, whether or not you're a fan of this franchise, whether you watched the shows and you've played other video games based on it, um, you know, if I'm honest, I mean, I've watched, like, I'm not a, a super duper fan, but I d have watched quite a bit of it. But when it came to video games, I never really got into them. Um, but that's Dragon Ball Z. And so the Dragon Ball Z, well, the Dragon Ball Fighter Z, um, closed beta starts from September 16th to the 18th. And registration has actually been delayed to August 22nd. 
This is from the uh, guys over and gals over at WCCF Tech. Um, now, because you'll, you'll remember, Jay, um, remember E3 when they unveiled Dragon Ball Fighter Z? It think was so. well because now, admittedly, I haven't been into the fighting genre for a very, very long time. Um, it's just our our uh, editor in chief at Scholarly Gamers. Um, he is his life is fighting games. Like he loves it. He loves it. is. But, you know, quite rightly so, he is actually a complete badass at them as well. Um, but so anyway, I was, um, we a pack of us were watching the PlayStation reveal, the Sony's um, presentation at E3 live together. You know, we're actually recording it, doing our reactions to it. And, um, you know, so Marvel vs. Capcom was coming. But then when they showed this, I mean, everyone just lost their shit. Um the footage for it keep in mind it's still it was still relatively early at the time that's what they were claiming um footage looked absolutely amazing um now obviously this is only on um playstation 4 uh as far as i know i'm not sure if they'll i think will it be a pc as well i'm honestly not quite sure um but anyway when it comes to fighting games this looks um, like it's going to be just absolutely amazing. The mechanics look great. The graphics are sweet. It stands true to the storyline. Um, Dragon Ball Fighter Z is definitely a, a game to keep your eye on if you have a PlayStation uh, and if you're into fighting games. Um, but the, the the main news here is that the closed beta has been been pushed back. Um, <coughs> The original plan was that actually registration for the beta would have started yesterday. Um, but they've been moved. Um, allegedly, um, because of the popularity of this game, they're actually they're attempting to be proactive. And they foresee that there's going to be a lot of people really trying to sign up. So they've, they've basically um, pushed back the registration date so they can make sure their servers and whatnot, you know, their application process can actually, you know, take over. Uh, we'll handle, handle it. <laughs> can I have your motherboard? <laughs> <I'll pay. laughs> oh, see, you don't want my motherboard. Um, let's see. The um, yeah, you know, so they're they're saying that the volume of subscribers they're expecting to be huge because there is there's a lot of people really hyped up for this game. <laughs> Um, so it'll be quite, quite interesting. Hey, Karma, how you doing, bud? Um, but yeah, it was just, you know, it was just interesting. They released, um, you know, they'd said that, look, uh, Bandai Namco, they want to thank all their fans for tremendous support for Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Uh, they'd announced at EVO 2017, uh, that the closed beta signups were going to be on July, but due to the volume of excitement and enthusiasm surrounding this announcement, we've decided to expand the capacity of the closed beta in an effort to enable more players to participate. So, you know, that's good. It's good news. I mean, it's it sucks for, you know, obviously fans of the series, that, oh, we've got to wait another month in order to sign up um, for the for the beta. Um, oh, good. No, hey, it's um, it's an older motherboard, Josh. You know, it is, you know, I'm on older equipment, um, but it is solid. It's rock solid. I mean, that's got that, um, at the minute, my CPU's running at a stable 4.8, um, which is uh, quite a bit over its uh, original spec. So um, I'm quite happy with that. Quite happy with that. Um, and that's true. You could, you could visit. You could visit. It's always an option. Um, but yeah, you know, so Dragon Ball Fighter Z closed beta have been pushed back a month. Um, for the registration process, but the actual beta itself will be September 16th to 18th, a very small window. Um, and it is basically going to be a technical test, but again, if you're in the fighting games, then you've obviously heard of Dragon Ball Fighter Z already. Um, but there you go. If you were wondering what the hell's happening, you know, that you thought the, uh, the beta registration was supposed to be open already, well, hey, it's been pushed back to August 22nd. Um, what about yourself, Jade? Did you were you ever much of a Dragon Ball Z fan? Uh, I, well, I used to be a massive Dragon Ball fan. I've oh, seen everything. Yeah. The Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT. I'm slowly working my way through Super. Um, but the thing is, I played a few of the um, sort of Dragon Ball fighting games, mm -hmm. but I've, I've never been a big fighting game fan. I used to be quite a lot as a kid when it was uh, like Tekken and stuff. But mm -hmm. 
kind of uh, never really played much of things like Street Fighter or stuff like that. So I'm, I kind of stay away from the fighting genre mainly because I'm terrible at them. Uh, and uh, I used to have my arse handed to me by my brother uh, ah, when we used to play more combat. I used to get so frustrated. See, I was my, one... <laughs> my, my tactics were always uh, basically almost face mash, the it? controller. You were, a, you were a crouch <laughs> puncher, don't lie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a valid tactic. I was one of those Holy kids is. that'd go to the arcade and I loved fighting games, you know, where I could put a quarter, because obviously I was in the States at the time, put a quarter in a machine and I would be there for ages, you know, just like people, you know, kicking ass. You know, eventually, yeah, someone would end up beating me. But usually that 25 cents, that one quarter of a dollar would equal a hell of a long time of entertainment. So when the arcade scene was still relevant, I was really in the fighting games. But then by the time, you know, like I got a Super Nintendo and obviously I had Street Fighter 2, loved yeah. it, played it over and over and over. Same when Killer Instinct had came out on the um, Nintendo 64 and whatnot. Um, I just, once fighting games were in the house, I just, I was never as super duper into them as, um, as I was at the arcade. Um, I still enjoy them every so often, but... You know, there's never been one that I've been super hyped up about. I mean, even, like, I borrowed, I think, one of the latest Mortal Kombat's off one yeah. of my nephews or something, and it was cool. And I enjoyed it. You know, it was neat, but it just... I don't know. They don't grasp me anymore. I think I think part of it is probably the same with me. I find it more fun to play with people than just sit at home and play by myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um... <laughs> You're right, you're right, Josh. You, it's fine, I'll come up and distract him. Don't worry. Wouldn't. See, now that could work. Jay could take me out for drinks. Because that, you know, I'm not going to turn that down. <laughs> Obviously. I um, won't make it back, though, because he's Scottish, and I won't be able to keep up with him. <laughs> hey, you I'll did, all, you did all right that day in London. <laughs> you did all right. Although we didn't go crazy. Now, no, we didn't. Me and Joe, we, we just spent the entire day just... Pfft, drinking and then went to a japanese restaurant had started having some sake and oh god we yeah we but we that weren't we, we didn't get shit faced though you know we just had a, a good solid day of drinking the weather was good that day so most of the time we were outside um oh but yeah no remember someone's supposed to be coming up this way one of these days i will be don't worry okay I yeah sure be. yeah i believe that we're almost at the end of the summer it's fine jay let's see how it is it's fine it's fine You've had two weeks off work sitting around doing fuck all. Could have came up, couldn't you? Couldn't you? Couldn't could've you? Could have done. Could've but done. You, you don't care. I didn't. I do care. Anyhow. Right. So it was about the first week really? that What's we've been playing uh, Player Unknown. Oh, I love it when you pull up a, a web page and like a video just automatically starts to play. Um, um, I can tell it's one you just opened up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, if you've been watching... <laughs> just anything any if you go to stream uh you know if you're looking at twitch if you're looking at mixer even if you're looking at smashcast uh, or youtube gaming everyone has heard of player unknowns battlegrounds um oh yes it will josh it will happen one day um player unknowns battlegrounds is obviously just taking things over and you know for good reason that it's, it's different every time you play it you can play it on your own you can play it in duos triples you know full squad um, and, you know, the Battle Royale type of game has been popular for the last few years. Uh, not necessarily my cup of tea, um, but, you know, in fact, it's funny, one of the biggest complaints um, on Mixer at the minute, there's been quite a few, quite a few respectable people kind of speaking up, saying, look, the, the Mixer director is getting a bit boring because people are either playing Player Unknown's Battlegrounds or Rainbow Six Siege, or, you know, there's only like a handful of games folk are playing. Um, and it's always kind of a bit of a shame because, you know, you do want a bit of diversity. Yes, if you're one of these people that's just chasing followers and numbers, then it's it's understandable. A lot of people fall into that kind of, you know, this thinking that, oh, well, if that's what the popular people are doing, I need to do the same thing. Um, which, well, it might work out for you. But at the same time, you know, it just it's nice to have a bit of diversity. There's nothing better than kind of going through a directory seeing a game you've never heard of and going oh oh i want to go check that out um but anyway i digress player knows battlegrounds we've all heard about it we've all either seen it or we've all or played it um well big bit of news from a game spot is that player knows battlegrounds will have its first big esports tournament next month um so yeah i believe that's going to be 
Is it being held at Gamescom in Cologne? Probably. Uh, it looks like it. It, it looks seen. that way. Uh, the PUBG Invitational, yep, next month at the Gamescom conference. Gamescom is, you know, even so everyone looks towards E3 for, like, the big announcements and whatnot, it's always traditionally Gamescom is where games are central stage. E3 is, you know, the Electronics Entertainment Expo, hence why you'll hear about hardware. We saw the VR on show, whereas Gamescom is always just pure raw games. Um, it's not unusual for them to do tournaments there, but so this is quite... It's quite big for all sorts of stuff. Like oh god, yeah. I remember time. watching quite a few league tournaments there. I've yep. come overseas, does stuff like yep. that. Yep, um, they've had, I'm sure they've had Call of Duty uh, tournaments there as well. Um, it's a big centre for it all. So um, it's quite interesting. I think what's interesting about it is just esports in general, right? If we think of esports, how do they usually work? It's usually a team, right? You know, a squad. And it's usually bracketed, it's usually quite simple to set up a tournament because you'll have you know team elevate versus um excellence gaming and whatnot and yeah. whoever wins progresses to the next stage and it's usually um a team-based system or you know a solo type ordeal um whereas with P player knowns battlegrounds you know we're talking about a completely different kettle of fish here you can have up to a hundred players in a free-for-all you know all attempting to outlast the others um so the way they're going to do it at Cologne, allegedly, um, they're going to cap it, I believe, at 80 people. Um, and they're going to do a three-game set to determine the winner. There's going to be competitions in all the modes. Solo, duo, first-person duo, as well as squad um, tournaments. And um, the prize pool looks okay, not too bad. Um, Blue Hole, who's, the, uh, who's organizing this esports tournament for PUBG said that the prize pool is going to be $350,000. Um, the devs are also going to be selling cosmetic items to the general public to fund the prize pool, um, and also to give to charities, they're saying. These items are going to come in the form of uh, an in-game crate that you can buy for $2.50, and they'll include several themed items. Um, no, I don't believe... I, I don't think that they would ever do a zombies mode they might do but you know the biggest uh, the next biggest thing to happen with player knowns battlegrounds is first person servers that is something that is going to be quite game changing um where you know you you can only you can't go into third person because if we're honest most people who play player knowns when you use third use third person for traveling around use third person when you're coming to a corner or checking into a room right it allows you that little bit extra field of view but when most people are going to be killing folk, they go into first person, you know, they go into aim mode. But to have first person only servers just is a total game changer. Just imagine that, you know, so now you have to actually, as you're walking around, you're having to kind of turn around. Whereas at the minute in third person, you can run that way, your weapon's still pointing that way, but you can swivel your mouse and look, you know, back the other way. You, you're not going to be able to do that on the first-person servers, which are coming very, very soon, I do believe. Um, but yeah, so the, the first actual Player Unknowns eSport tournament, because they have had tournaments, but they haven't been official eSport, you know, um, with huge money and prize pools and whatnot. But it's going to be held August 23rd to 26th, so just next month, in Cologne, Germany, at Gamescom. So that'll be um, that'll be quite neat. Um, I'm going to have uh, to keep an eye on that, because that'll be quite interesting how they do it and how it uh, goes. I mean, I know you're with me. You haven't bought it on PC. I mean, I kept putting it off, and you know, I wasn't sure if I was. But what about the, uh, the console release? Are you interested at all in grabbing it on console, or...? It's the kind of game that I reckon would probably interest me. Um, because I've, I've got a uh, mate on PC who keeps uh, pestering me to buy it as well. But I, I, I'm not too sure yet, because it seems like it'd be fun and enjoyable to play and probably kind of up my street, but I, I just don't know if I'll get it though. Have you tried, like, other, um, ones, obviously, I mean, there, there's a lot of ones out there that are zombie-related, like your H1Z one and all that. Yeah, um, no, no, I've, I've never ever tried them. 
Well, because there's Never. um, oh, what's the name of it? Is it not DayZ? DayZ is the free one. Yeah, DayZ. That was the uh, one from I can't remember if it was a Modern Armor or whatever it was. Well, yeah, it started off on Armor yeah, and everything, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, well, but Player Unknown's Battleground, same thing. This was a, yeah. an Arma 3 mod that eventually became its own uh, its own game. To be fair, I probably at some point will get it and try it, um, just for the fun of it. But at the moment, I've got a lot of games to play. Oh, oh, stuff you you and me both, brother. You and me both. Yeah, I've got my got my Tuesday night seed, so <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty, pretty good. But um, the first person here, though, will definitely be a massive uh, sort of game changer on those kind of servers because as you say you haven't got this 360 field of vision that you can just easily go through and uh, easily check around corners and things like that so that will make it a lot more i think that'll make it a lot more hard and a lot more fun yeah. in my own personal opinion that's yeah. just because of what you like to get used to doing and there'll be none of this like i can just stand around the corner and let my 3d point of view let me know if there's somebody around there waiting for me or anything like that absolutely now first person in those battle royale type games it does it just makes it so much uh, so much more difficult because people can you know sneak up on you um it's just uh, yeah it's this gonna is, be uh, interesting this is how the virtual hunger games work starts don't worry you wait and soon people start getting organized into districts and getting thrown into virtual player unknown it's funny that you mentioned virtual because um a good friend of mine he plays his um h1z1 but with his vr headset and it's fantastic. That might I mean, be pretty good, to be fair. It's absolutely amazing. Um, like even like because they just recently did a graphical update a few months back, um, and he had sent me a screenshot of like this kind of forest thing, you know, blah blah. Yeah. And he says, "Oh, this looks amazing in VR." And so I, I text him back. I'm like, "Oh my god, what tech demo is that?" Because it looked like a tech demo. He's like, "No, this is the new graphical update for H1Z1." I was like, what? Get the... Seriously? <laughs> Holy crap. Um, I reckon that'd be a lot of fun in a VR. A yeah. Lot of fun. I, would, I would think that would be... Um, that's that's something I would probably pick up VR if I ever had one. Would be something like that, because I reckon that'd be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, especially, you can imagine the reactions as well when someone gets the jump on you. Yeah. <laughs> you you would quite literally, most likely, I would. Yourself. I would love to have a go on something. I'd... I don't know if it was, it was on one of the uh, gadget shows, I think, at one point, and they had um, a massive screen up. Uh, Payton Battlefield, I think, or Call of Duty. They had, they, funny enough, they had paintball guns surrounding them. Um, but essentially, they had these di omni, I think it's omni multi-directional, omni directional um, treadmill. So when he walked, it moved his oh, character forward, God, but, it pushed, yes. but he still went back. I would love something like that with VR, with a game like that. That yeah. would be a, it, minus the paintball gun. That has obviously. always been the thing that um, was missing from VR is yeah. that the full physical, you know, interaction. I mean, I'd love like to have that. a setup like that, but the amount of money to get a setup like that setup. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I'd, I'd personally be perfectly happy with just a racing setup for VR. Yeah, I would love that. Um, okay, yeah, it'd be nice to get one of the. Um, ones with all the you know hydraulics and stuff yeah i've as well. uh, been on one of those today, um i think it was in brian or something yeah all the proper sort of pistons mm. and everything it, it felt really weird being on that again but it was amazing but yeah uh, anything like that really, really. Those, those are those are really expensive setups and things to have yes. done yes mm. that reminds me speaking of setups when i was at insomnia this weekend i saw a, a desk company called halberd um i think it's just www.halberd.com i believe you're gonna have to check these guys out because yeah i'm i'm thinking the next desk i buy is gonna be from these guys just, what's that what they called uh halberd you know like the ancient like the poleaxe type thing yeah um i'm pretty sure it's just www.halberd.com um everything Look you know this. they're all made to order they're just um oh and the different models they have. They've got one that's fully adjusted. Oh, it's just. Mm. Are these desks, aren't they? These are desks, but yes. But yeah, look at they... the, look at those afterwards. They're okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm uh, <laughs> getting distracted. They're fantastic. <laughs> um, right. Let's talk about the Nintendo Switch next. Right. Um, I saw this article from Tech Radar, and um, it caught my attention because you know I'm always interested in not necessarily outlandish claims but you know statistics information you know i'm one of these people that i love to learn things um so this headline caught my eye you know and the headline was why nintendo switch sales uh, sales figures make interesting reading for sony and microsoft 
So that caught my attention. I was like, oh, okay, what, what's this all about? Um, at the latest financial, uh, what do you call it, report, I guess, um, Nintendo announced that they've sold nearly 5 million Nintendo Switch consoles since the hardware went on sale at the beginning of March. So for Nintendo, that is absolutely great news. Um, the Wii U, which, how long had the Wii U been out? When did, when did the Wii U even come out, G? I mean, that's like ages I can't ago, remember, right? that's a long time ago. Right? It's, it's actually quite a long time ago. It's very long. Um, the Wii U only sold about 13.5 million units ever, right? It took a year for the Wii U to hit the 5 million mark. And the Switch has already done that in just a few months. So it's looking very, very good. Uh, they're estimating that the Switch is probably going to sell double that in its first year. So they're, they're, they're on track to hit at least 10 million units sold. Um, which is cool. And just on its own is very interesting. But what's even more interesting is how the sales of the Switch compare to the Xbox One and the PS4. In the first year, the Xbox One sold about the same amount that the Switch is projected to, so around 10 million or so, while the PS4 sold 7 million units in its first five months, but for its first year, sold 14 million. You know, I mean, that's no, that doesn't come out as a surprise to anyone. We all know that the PS4, you know, on a global scale at least, you know, has, has outperformed and outsold the Xbox One. Um, so it shouldn't come as any surprise that the Nintendo Switch most likely will not outsell the PS4, right? You know, we get that. But when we start comparing it against the Xbox One, um, this looks quite interesting. You know, when you think about how Sony and um, the Xbox One and the, P the PlayStation 4, right, you know, even before those, every generation of Xbox and every generation of PlayStation, you know, they keep trying to, they go loggerheads. They're always trying to outdo each other in hardware and graphics or in, you know, exclusive titles and whatnot. And if we're honest, Nintendo's always just kind of done its own thing, haven't they? I mean, they've, they've never tried to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak. They've always just done their own thing, and whether it's been a success or not, they don't care you know they just they want to make their systems make their games and that's great um every so often there's been a generation when nintendo's just wiped the floor with with other consoles that's the weird thing about nintendo you know they either really outperform them or really just you know significantly underperform um i think that's is that not really been mostly due to a lot of times have been quite gimmicky in the past I suppose it's almost innovation, isn't it? I mean, the Wii U mm -hmm. compared to the Wii change-wise wasn't that great. But if you compare, I believe it was the Wii to what was it, the GameCube before, if I'm correct? Yes. It was a very, very big sort of change in terms of what they've done, and uh, well, yeah, essentially what they've done with it all, isn't it? You yeah. say all the sort of gimmicky sort of things, and again, the same as sort of Switch. Switch is very different to that of the Wii and the Wii U, mm -hmm. which again, I think is why it's sold. Plus, I think about a personally look at it, I know there hasn't been too many games there's been a lot from what I've seen a few more better games on the uh, Switch anyway that I'd love to be personally for example be yeah, more oh, in. Splatoon 2 is allegedly brilliant um, of course Mario Kart 8 looks cool ARMS is supposed to be quite neat as well there's uh, definitely it's a lot of games it's just the, interesting uh, that in the console market you know, we tend to think it's all about the horsepower. That's just, that is what the the two the two main horses in the race have always been about their graphical power and how things look. Whereas the Switch, based on its sales performance right now, looks to be a you know it's probably going to be neck and neck, possibly even outperform the Xbox One in sales. And I think that's just quite interesting. It shows that this kind of preconception that oh no, gamers just want the best graphics. That's really what they care about. Um, yeah, it just it kind of puts a little bit of doubt on but that then, now, doesn't it? You know that because the Switch, don't get me wrong, the stuff looks good, but we know, you know, it's not showing at full HD most of the time. Um, we know that it yeah. can have some performance issues. Um, I think there were some games, wasn't it Zelda initially that performed better out of the dock than I it did it might have been. in. Um, 
the thing with the uh, Switch, though, as you've got to look at, is Nintendo's never really, as you say, sort of prided itself upon trying to, almost all the Xbox and PlayStation do, of look, our amazing sort of graphics. They've more prided themselves, as you say, on sort of gimmicky things, mm. uh, more fun. But I think half the reason why the Switch, again, has upped its sales units and is looking to compete with the Xbox, while well, not so much PlayStation that's selling the article, is because of the mobility of it. You can take it out. Yeah, yeah it doesn't have a long battery life, but I... You can take it with you to work if you want it to. For breaks, that sounds really stupid, but I've played Mario Kart quite a few times against a mate at work because he's got one, and I really enjoy it on there. <laughs> um, but it's something, again, if you're on the sort of train, you don't got to worry about getting your phone out and having your phone die, and you can actually play sort of proper games you want to play. Just sitting on a train, a car journey. True, if you're true. stuck in some kind of um, airport for God knows how long, you haven't got to worry about it. So gonna, I've got a lump out an Xbox and a TV or anything like that. I think that's probably half the other reason as well. Well, not half, but part of the other reason why the Switch is selling quite well is yeah. just one, due to the games it's shipped with, like Zelda, for example, completely different type of Zelda from what I've, uh, think. I, I really do want to play a new one, but I can't warrant buying a Switch at the moment. It's just, out of, I would like to get one eventually, but at the moment. But yeah, I think, I think combination of the games it's shipped, as you said, like Splatoon 2, is it? Uh, how good that is. And obviously just this mobility aspect of it almost. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's some things that irritate me about the Switch. This whole having to have a mobile phone for the party chat, that's a bit weird. Um, yeah. That's I just, you know, in this day and age, really. But again, this is what happens when you have a piece of hardware that, let's be honest, was first and foremost designed for the Japanese market. And that's the way Nintendo rolls. I mean, yeah, they want to make money all over the world, but, you know, it's all about the stuff at home first. And... Yeah, for the lifestyle over there, especially with the tweens and even folk in their 30s that don't have family, because that's quite common, you know, as grown professionals who are, have lead a very, you know, single life, um, I can understand why they've made some of those decisions. It, it suits Japanese culture quite well. It doesn't necessarily translate to the West, um, but, you know, they're doing good. I think, I mean, the exciting thing for me is that that based off of how their sales have been so far, it's really making this, um, it's always, for years now, it's been a two-horse race. And now Nintendo's actually taken up some market share here, possibly might even surpass the Xbox One in sales. And, you know, I mean, yes, we know I play on Xbox One. That doesn't mean that I pish and bleed green, you know. I don't owe Microsoft anything. Um... You know, but it's nice. It's nice to see. Oh, hey, look! You know, they're finally you know a bit more pressure because it's like in the PC world, how Intel has ruled the roost for better part of a decade now, right? And when there's not any competition, they don't have to try hard. That's why every single generation of Intel chip over the last ten years or whatnot has been tiny little incremental upgrades. We're talking single digit percentage increases in performance, right? Because why the hell not? There's no, there's been no competition for them. So that's all they've had to do. And even with video cards, um, it was the same way. I mean, the nine series of uh, Nvidia cards had a little bit of competition from some of the, the big heavy hitting AMD cards. You know, especially things like, what was it, the 390 double X, I believe it was, and then when the Fury came out, but the Fury was ridiculously overpriced. Um, you know, but now we're in this new world where Ryzen, AMD's came back, Ryzen's coming, uh, well, Ryzen's here, but now the, the new Epic's on the horizon. Uh, of course, the video stuff, the, when the, the 10 series and video cards came out, they just blew everything out of the water. Um, and then AMD introduced the RX 480, which is good, entry level to mid range. Doesn't blow them out of the water, but still, it's you know it's a good card. Same with the 580, the little little refresh. Um, but now with the next video card around the corner, um, things will change. Anytime you have competition, it makes companies try harder. And I think that's what interests me most. With the Switch doing as well as it's doing, it puts pressure on Sony and Microsoft to make their own products better. So, it's a win-win situation for us, I think. It is. You know, it's just good. It's just good. The, uh, AMD Intel. <laughs> it just, then. But I mean, it's just, it's, it, 
it just does though, doesn't it? It's just natural to think of that. Um, you know. Exactly. The more, more competition, the more they've got to try, the more we can see a lot more innovation come yeah. from. I mean, absolutely. Um, but you've always got the things of they look at what other companies do and potentially, I don't want to use the word steal ideas, but. It's, like um, yeah, it's, it's inspiration. Yeah, inspiration. <laughs> inspiration, you know. <laughs> no, one, no one steals nowadays. No, no. No, it's, no. Like, it's like artwork and emotes on, on Twitch and Mixer channels. No one steals anyone's artwork. They're, they're inspired by it. Exactly. Yeah, um, architecture. Uh, it's funny enough, actually, one of the, um, the contributors at Scholarly Gamers is a, uh, he works for AMD. Um, and he's involved in like, how do you even put it? You know, like the, like the API stuff, like when it comes to drivers, like the Crimson drivers, for example, he had a part in that. Um, haven't had the chance to really sit down and talk to him too much. Um, you know, and likewise, it's not like he can give us insider info or anything. <laughs> not if he wants to keep his job. Well, no, exactly. Um, but, um, I just remember giving him a bit of feedback about when the Crimson drivers had came out because I was still on an AMD card at that time. And the Crimson Drivers, and even like the, the Mantle stuff, uh, the optimization is absolutely amazing um, when it's when it performs correctly. But, you know, speaking of AMD, I mean, has there ever been a week lately, like in the last few months that we haven't talked about AMD at some point? I mean, they're just... No, no, it comes up pretty much every week. <laughs> almost, almost every week. I mean, that, that's just when you know you're into your hardware. You know you're a geek. Um... Because, let's be honest, they're, they're doing stuff right. Um, so anyway, I've got an article here. You've probably heard a few rumors going around on the internet about the RX Vega. We've talked about it before. We know that the RX Vega is almost here. Yes, the Frontier Edition, the professional card, was already released. But it's the RX Vega, which is the gaming version, that we're looking forward to. Um, well, basically, according to PC Gamer, there's been some more benchmark leaks... And this benchmark shows that the RX Vega matches the GTX 1080 in 3D Mark Fire Strike. Um, if we look at the scores here, um, what are we saying? Right, that was um, RX Vega it was on a i7 5960, and uh, for the Fire Strike test, the average score was about mm, let's see, yeah, 20, 21,857. So, I mean, that puts it faster than a 1070, comparable to a 1080, but slower than a GTX 1080 Ti. So, you know, I think that's kind of what, when we were talking the other week, that's kind of what we thought it was going to be anyway, right? Yeah. That it's going to be better than a 1070, maybe, you know, head-to-head -head with a 1080. I think that's going to depend on games. Like, isn't it the, the Battlefield games always tend to... Um, Anything from EA performs better from AMD, um, whereas there's other games that perform better. But, you know, it's always kind of give and take. Certain games are better, blah, 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 blah. Um, but we knew that it was going to be slower than the 1080 Ti. Um, again, this isn't official. These are just what people have found on um, 3D Mark's database, because this is the problem now. Now that 3D Mark is through Steam, you know, like back in the day, it wasn't. It was a standalone program. Um, yeah. You could run a benchmark and keep it to yourself, right? That that was it. No one had to know. You could test and test and test over and over, till finally you got the score you wanted, and then you would submit it online. But now that 3D Mark is via Steam, it automatically every time you run a benchmark, it'll submit it. So when you've got people testing these things, like you know, early review copies. Um, this is how these types of scores get leaked out on the internet. Um, now, I don't have the link here, Jay, but remember in the past we talked about how pricing is probably yes. going to make or break the RX Vega, where, you know, we're both a kind of the same opinion that, that Vega needs to be, obviously needs to be cheaper than a 1080, right? I mean, that's the way we thought. If you, if you want 1080 performance, you know, you would. You would just buy a 1080. Um, you know, if it's the same price as a 1070, then okay, that's probably still relatively appetizing because you're getting 1080 performance for the price of a 1070. Um, 
you know, so we were still we were up in the air about oh how's how this is gonna go down is how this is gonna go down. There's nothing official, but I just spied today um, on a Swedish tech site, um, as in like you know a tech site that sells computer components. Yeah. And they had like pre-order pricing for the RX Vega. Now to put this in perspective, shit is expensive in Sweden. Okay, so right off the bat, everything's way more expensive. And this is here in the UK, I'm saying stuff's expensive over there, <laughs> right? So that kind of puts in a perspective for you, right? Um, and their price, I believe, I think, I don't think Sweden's in the euro. I think they still use Kronen or something, I think, um, if memory serves. Yeah, I'm sure that Sweden's not in the euro. Um, but anyway, the price of the Vega that the site had was more expensive than a 1080. Not by much, but just a little bit. And I hope that's just a company being silly, you know, with its pre-order yeah. pricing. Because if this thing's more expensive than a GeForce GTX 1080, then I don't see why anyone would really bother. You know what I mean? It has to be, it has to have like a sweet spot. And it, uh, except for the die-hard AMD fans. And I suppose the other complication is right now, the markup on video cards because of these goddamn Bitcoin and Ethereum miners, the digit, the cryptocurrency miners, it's still affecting video cards. If you go on eBay right now, Jay, and search for an AMD RX 580, you'll probably be disgusted by the prices. Um, and that card is, you know, you can buy that card for about 260 quid if it was in stock anywhere, which guess what? Yeah, it's not because they're all getting bought by the um, the cryptocurrency miners. Yep. Cryptocurrency mining has become so popular that now, who is it? MSI, ASUS, I think EVGA, they are all bringing out um, mining specific cards. These are video cards that don't even have a display out on them. <laughs> right? And, there's, and it's as a way of, they're hoping by doing that there'll actually be video cards for us gamers available to buy because that's the <laughs> problem we have at the minute. Like, even like, see me right now, I could, the 1060 is still available in stock and quite a lot of bits, so it's yeah. not that bad. But say if there was a point that now the 1060s are all getting picked up and they're out of stock everywhere, I could actually sell my card and make a profit on it that's how ridiculous the video card yeah. market is at the minute and that's what people are doing there's been folk that have had like an amd 480 which came out you know quite a while back um when it came out it was only a 250 dollar i mean 100 250 quid card um and i've seen folks sell those for like 350 <laughs> right i mean would you why wouldn't you <laughs> right if someone actually well, yeah, exactly. offered you 350 quid for a card you only paid 250 for of course you'd say oh I've seen folk on the internet that have upgraded to a 1070 because they sold their old video card. You know, their old crap, well, not crappy, but you know what I mean? It's just... Eat the uh, old card, the outdated card. Exactly, it's just ridiculous. Um, but no, the, the rumors are suggesting that the Vega in the US is going to be 650 to $700. Um, so I'm assuming that'll translate to us. I mean, let's be honest, it usually is the same number just with a damn pound symbol but i would say it's got i would hope it'd be more in the four to five hundred range and even then that's still you know it is steep but when a te when a ti is a better part of 800 quid a 1080 i think you can get now for 600 i think i know i've seen overclockers uk um were doing a sale over the weekend i think they had 1070s for under 400 it was like 398 quid for a 1070, which is a great card. That's a perfect place to be at um, if you can afford that. Um, but oh well. We will see. RX Vega, not too far away. Getting there. Almost there. Um, it's too bad that Joe wasn't here. Uh, Gimboid, our buddy, um, unfortunately he's got... He's got some uh, some pain, and he wasn't able to come on the show. And it's a shame, because he is our resident Warframe guru. Yes. Um, again, this is a news item that's all over the place. I just pulled it from uh, Express. 
www.co.uk, which is a, a British newspaper over here. And it was about the Warframe Hero update. Um, a new Xbox One and PS4 patch. And that was uh, Monday that that launched. Um, so basically, it's not a huge expansion. It's just... It's another incremental one where they've introduced a new quest line, they've introduced a new Warframe, some new weapons, um, and I actually haven't had a chance to check it out. I did hop on today just to have a look to verify, oh yeah, I see the quest, oh yes, I can see there's new stuff to buy. Um, allegedly, the, um, the Harrow Warframe itself is pretty badass from what I've heard. I'm sure one of my nephews was saying that he had farmed it, and it was absolutely awesome. Um, the biggest thing about this update is actually the way it's redesigned the game, as in the way it's stored. If you think about it, I mean, let's be honest, you buy a game right nowadays, you install it, and God, how many how many gigabytes, Jay, does, like, you know, a big AAA game take these days? Too bloody much. Well, yeah, but it's, yeah, it's, it's on, what, 20, nice. 30 and up, isn't it? Like gigabytes yeah, for a lot of them. Something along those sort of lines. And then how big are the patches that come out subsequently? Some of them can be huge. I mean, you look at obviously like 18 gig patches before for certain games. Yeah, yeah, Things absolutely. Like Some of them are just huge. Um, they are massive. So Warframe had got to the point it was 46 gigabytes of disk space. Right, that's where Warframe was sitting at. Um, so what this Hero update actually did, completely uninstalled it and reinstalled because they've optimized the storage. Um, they did what they called summer cleaning and they removed old game assets that were no longer in use. And by doing that, they reduced the footprint of the game from 46 gigabytes of disk space to 21 gigs. So I mean, that just shows you, they, they shaved off well, 25 gigs, more than half, was that, 51 or 52% just by removing old assets that are no longer in use. I mean, holy shit, that's, um, that's a lot of crap. Um, and also what they did, they rearranged all the existing assets into what they're calling optimal locations, um, to speed up load times. Um, so it's quite interesting. It's, on one hand, it's been a bit of an inconvenience for folk because instead of just downloading a small incremental patch, what has effectively happened is the whole thing's been deleted and they've now had to reinstall it. But the way storage works on consoles half the time, well, I know it happens on the Xbox, you have to make sure you have that space available. You know, even so, it's going to be deleting it and then put it back on. You still had to make sure you had enough speed. It's weird. It's just the way it works. Um, that's hardware for you. Because um, no Gimboid ran into that. He had, to, <laughs> he had to actually delete a couple of games <laughs> in order to install the, the Warframe update. And it was just, it blew his mind. He's like, wait a minute, this update is cutting the game size in half, but I have to delete something in order to install it. This makes no sense. Um... Once I'd gotten a conversation, I said, yeah, but it's the way that storage, you know, allocation of sectors works on a, on a disk. It's, you know, you have to have the space because it will temporarily move things and blah, 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 blah. But, oh, well. But no, the uh, the Warframe Hero update launched on a Monday. So you'll notice that it's, it's basically cut the storage in half. Plenty of game optimizations, new Warframe, new weapons, new quest line. Um, I still think Warframe is um, probably one of the best free-to-play games out there. I say free-to-play, it's also free the most play. expensive free-to-play game from my perspective, <laughs> as in it's the most money I've personally spent. Probably not as much as you spent on League. Um, oh god, or any other but... <laughs> free-to-play games in my... Uh... <laughs> ridiculous, I spent so much money on them. <laughs> well, I did the same in World of Tanks as well, though. I dumped quite a bit yeah. of... You know, but I wanted all those American premiums. Not, you know, just for my collection. Um, I can't even imagine what's way like Matt's paid for. I think he, he probably yeah. tops me out compared to what yeah. I've paid for uh, free to play games. But uh, no, no, I, mean, I kind of miss Warframe. Um, but it's, it was one of those games that took quite a bit of time sync from me, and I was kind of like, it's really pull away now. But it, it, it's a fan, considering it's a free to play, as you say, because in essence, it, it can be a free to play completely. It, it's very, very good. And what they're now doing with all this. Planes of Eidolon and obviously mm -hmm. again with this just sort of loose um, clearing up storage space and everything is it's amazing really. Yeah, no, it is. it's going to be um, 
I'm, I know, I know, Game Boy is extremely excited about the uh, the planes of Edelon and how it looks with this, you know, this whole kind of open world aspect. It'll be, um, it's good. The thing I like about Warframe is when you look over the last few years or the last couple of years, whenever there's been a content uh, content drought in any of the other games we've been playing, um, Warframe has been quite good for me for that. <laughs> you know, if there's been times yeah. when there's nothing else happening or I don't feel like playing something oh well I can go play Warframe I can go do this I can go do that and it's um it's been quite good for that it's just well with Siege Siege just at the yeah. minute it's and let's be honest Siege isn't going anywhere it just isn't that game no. continues to grow it continues to get better um and it's just uh yeah it's just not going anywhere I think soon. I think with Warframe for me uh, I'm kind of scared about going back because of it's been so long since I've played. I know all these changes are there, and I'm going to have to. I'm going to feel like an absolute scrub again, mm -hmm. getting back into it. I mean, I used to spend ages on Warframe, looking at yeah. all the drop rates, having all that stuff up, and no, now I'll go back and be it, like, it, "Where it, am I?" It scratched that itch for you. It, there yeah. was, it was an itch that you know other games had been scratching, but when they stopped, um, you know, you did. You had your there was nothing around that was kind of doing it for you, and um, Warframe did that very, very well. Um, I just, it's not that I get bored of it, I just, if we're, the, the critical thing for me about it is, if we're honest, it can get repetitive. Yes. Because it is about the grind. So you end up running the same void missions, doing the same things to get your keys, and now you can somewhat fix that by, okay, changing it up, and saying, okay, right, we'll stop that, let's go do this. You know, there is ways around it, but I think that's the thing that got me. And I know that sounds stupid because, let's be honest, most games are repetitive. You know, doing strikes, doing raids and Destiny, yes, you know, oh, yeah. eventually it becomes repetitive. Playing Siege, even so it's an online multiplayer game that no match is the same, that can also still get, you know, you get burnt out on it after a few hours, um, I think, if we're honest. You yeah. know what I mean? You can, you can do a long sesh of Siege, but you do eventually get to a saturation same. point where you're like... Same with any game, as you say, though, isn't it? Yeah. Where you play two months and become bored. I mean, I remember, like, soloing uh, Derelict Survivals and Derelict Missions, mm -hmm. trying to build up my Tonkor to the point where it's just stupid. And uh, things like that. But, yeah, no, as you say, it, for me, it did become a bit of a... It almost... I don't know if you've ever heard of this game, a game called Aeon I used to play online. Oh, yeah, no, I remember, um, yeah, I remember Aeon. That I really, I really enjoyed that uh, game. I thought it was better than WoW, actually, personally. But the grind on it was just ridiculous. It was, it was silly to try and get up levels. Um, and my PC couldn't handle all the uh, units and all people in one place. But same, same sort of thing with Warframe. We got to the point where it's grinding. I was just like, I need to take a break from this. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. But yes, yeah, so the Chains of Hero expansion has. Uh have the storage space of it, introduce some new things, and uh, most Warframe fans are just patiently awaiting for the planes of Edelon. Um, speaking of Siege, Siege in tomorrow, are we? Is that our plan? Uh, I'm not too sure if I'll be on tomorrow. I'll let you know, because okay. I think I'm out tomorrow evening, so that's, that's all. Fine. That's we'll fine. We'll, we'll talk about it. We will talk about it. That is it for news, folks, for this week. Um, you know, there wasn't that much tech stuff, there wasn't that, I mean, okay, there was like new game launches and stuff, things like Fortnite, but you know, you know me, I'm just, no, I'm more interested in different things, things that maybe, you know, aren't necessarily head night, headline news. Oh, see, Bear, you know, it's just timing, timing's key, you know, timing's key, everything, every good thing must come, come to an end, but it's okay, because guess what, if you've missed the live stream of this, don't fret, don't worry. You can visit www.scarlettlegamers.com and you will see the video there for all eternity. It will be uh, kicking about. If you can't wait till it goes live there, just keep an eye on my YouTube, QJungle66, for, a, uh, for a sneak peek there. And you can always just watch the VOD here on Mixer. Um, obviously, I have to do my scarlettlegamers.com plug. Plenty of great articles, always, plenty always. of great, great folks. Bear actually does his own video show, uh, which is every other week every other wednesday armchair gaming if you haven't checked that out you need to to do that um very enjoyable series so far really interested to see what the next theme you know what the next what game we're going to see uh see next because the first two episodes were Korea, um which fitted in perfectly with the allegory of the cave um so yeah we'll see what bear has for us in the future but anyway 
that is us for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Take it easy, everyone, and we'll uh, we'll catch you next week. Au revoir. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.